there been a, a shift when it comes to um, support for Ukraine that you see in the conference, support for this bill overall? I know there were 67 days, but right. about a third of the conference. And right. some of that stemming from what the former president says. No, I think it has more to do for many of us with positioning um, the aid package in a way that's uh, it's probably more more responsible, perhaps more acceptable to more of our base. Um, but I think we, there are a lot of us that want to get to yes, but we'd like to we'd like to position ourselves for for a position of put, be put in a position of strength to insist that the aid be actual military aid as opposed to other humanitarian and government you know, funding aid. I think those things are more appropriate for the neighborhood, if you will, the, the European allies that uh, are more affected by by uh, what's going on in Ukraine. America's interests in Ukraine are, you know, I think they're important. They're, they're real. They have to do with the spread of communism and the reemergence of the Soviet Union and making sure that we can push back on that in, in my way, in my view, in a much more responsible way than shedding American blood eventually if we don't do something about it. So I just, I think there are a lot of us that in the end want to be a yes vote, but we want to be able to negotiate for better terms. Right. And, and you, you have in your mind what that would look like. You yeah, I, sure. Yeah, in my mind, it's not very complicated. And I think to his credit, Donald Trump uh, came out with a pretty good idea yesterday with regard to turning it in, into a, a, a loan, whatever the country, a loan with generous... Um, you know, with very generous terms, um, maybe looking at some of the assets that might be available. Certainly in Russia there's assets. Certainly in Ukraine they have incredible uh, mineral assets. Um, but we can help our friends with the idea that if, if possible there would be a return on some of that investment. Not, not with interest, but, but at least some of that money would come back to the American taxpayer. But what he said the other day also... Didn't that kind of give a green light to Moscow and other things? I mean, and did some people interpret it that way? And that's a fundamental shift in the way we've done policy since the Marshall Plan. Right? Sure. Well, and the Marshall Plan is actually a pretty good example of, 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 a, of a comparison, if you will, that's worthy of a historical view, uh, you know, looked at. But um, with regard to get, sending a green light to, to Moscow, I'm more concerned, frankly, about journalists running to Moscow and and – interviewing the modern-day Marx as though somehow there's not a consequence to that. So th that's a little bit, I think, of the dilemma. I think we have within the party, to some degree, a, a generational difference that, you know, I, I forget that I'm not that young anymore and that Ronald Reagan was the first president I could vote for, not the most recent one. Um, but nonetheless, I still think there's, there's some of that that needs to be articulated. Why, why, why did Reagan borrow money to win the Cold War? I mean, he warned us in, in Fargo, North Dakota in 1962, I wasn't there, I was one year old at the time, that, um, that we're in a war that we aren't acknowledging we're in. And, uh, and, but he found a way to rally the country uh, over the course of decades, and certainly his presidency, to, you know, to invest in a Cold War that we first had to acknowledge we were in that prevented a single shot from being fired. And I just think some of us need to remind the country, or in some cases, educate the country. But, but that rhetoric inviting Russia to attack Europe, uh, European allies. No, I don't believe it would. I think, that, I think what it does is it sends a message to the European allies that the Western alliance is important. We need to stay together. Now, Donald Trump, to his credit, I mean, let, let me put it this way. The only president that has done more to bring the NATO countries into compliance with their, you know, their obligations to NATO itself, then Donald Trump was Vladimir Putin. I mean, I just think we haven't we have to get our act together and, and have an honest discussion about it. But do you think that kind of rhetoric is helpful? Do I think? Look again, Donald Trump has earned the right to say to have some some comments about the Western alliance. But to his credit, he was the one that brought a lot of them along. They, by his discipline, by his his you know projection of strength, um, by put, laying down some conditions, he brought some some NATO countries further along in terms of their own contribution to their own defense. But he didn't abandon them, and um, and now of course, like I said, Vladimir Putin has united them like they hadn't been for a very long time. And I just think there's a lot more common ground and, and a lot more that unites us. Now we find ourselves a few months from an election that seems to cloud some of that. I get that. 
um, we elect our people and, and, and politics matters. But um, we, just, we just we need to we need to support Ukraine. Ultimately, we just need to do it under the better conditions. Thank you. Thanks,